nearly $119 million. That was the winning bid for Edward Monk's The Scream when it went up for auction at Sotheby's this time last year. But our next guest says, well, you don't need millions to make a good art investment. Graham Rader is the founder and owner of the Rader Galleries here in New York City, and he joins us now as spring auction season kicks off in New York. So a lot of people, Graham, welcome to you. I think general people are just intimidated by the art scene. When you hear you've got $1 billion in precious paintings going up for auction this season, a lot of people say, it ain't for me. I wish it was, but I can't get there. But you've brought some works today that may be a little bit more affordable. Describe these Audubons that you, you have. You can buy an original Aquatint for less than $3,000 by the most famous bird artist that ever lived. So it's very affordable. The original work done in London between 1826 and 1838. You can buy the best. How do you do your homework? What are the best sources? People like you, gallery owners, research. How much homework, how much background do you have to do before showing up at the gallery, which again can be a little intimidating? Great question. And of course, buying the reference books, becoming a friend of the libraries, becoming a friend of the New York Public Library. They have three complete sets. Become a friend of the New York Historical Society. They have a set and they have all the watercolors up on exhibit at the New York Historical Society now. So use the librarians, use the museum curators to get information, other auction houses, and read the reference books. The uber rich use art because they'll hold on to it, for example, like gold, it's a safe haven, it's a, a firm asset, it's a real thing with markets which can sometimes be volatile and certain, although the stock market lately, that's arguable where the market is going. But art is seen as an alternative investment class. Um, so again, how do you know that you're paying the appropriate amount for art? Because it seems to just always appreciate. All the sophisticated art collectors now use the internet, which give auction records going back over 100 years for virtually any kind of book, map, or print that you want to collect. Uh, generally, Audubon's have been going up about 400% every 10 years, or about 13% a year. That's been pretty steady since I've been in business for the last 43 years. Okay, so tell me specifically what you've brought today. These are the owls, and I believe they're going to start about 150 to $175,000 at auction? Correct, the last time one of this quality came up, it made $187,000 at Christie's mm -hmm. in 2004. So why do you start with a lower price than what it last auctioned for? Well, we're still not quite over the depression of 2008. People are still conservative. Times are good, stock market's up, but a lot of people are still very confused about the new tax systems, the new uh, rules that are in place for how you handle your finances. So we're still trying to sell things for less than the 2008 prices. So what do you think it will ultimately go for, the owls starting? I think I'd be very happy if it sold for 150000 Really? Okay. So that you, this is pretty much a write-on. You don't expect uh, the paddles going up left and right in a strong bidding war. A lot of damage to people from the crash. At this level? Yes. So it's, it, it, would you say, is it a fair statement to say at the higher level, the munch, the screams, you know, th that those are just because those are, it, it's a whole different class of investors, the hedge fund guys and the hundred people who can afford to pay hundred million dollars uh, for a piece? I, I would say that I really don't understand those people. In some cases, nations mm -hmm. are bidding for these things. The national galleries of places like Australia that's become newly rich from their resources are bidding for these things for their country's mm -hmm. arts collections. So it might not be hedge fund guys, it might be Chinese, it might be Indians, it could be the everybody in the Middle East. Very, very hard to understand that. But I know that for this area, people who have love traditional history, love the traditional things that say the Rockefellers collected 80 years ago, this is what was in their homes. Uh, back then and so okay. it's very much sort of the kind of art that you'd see in a Ralph Lawrence. Well, store. it's just beautiful and we're so grateful to you, Graham, for bringing into our studio today. Graham Marader, thank you so much. Thanks. Ash? Great stuff, Laurie. Thank you very much. Well, listen, look, I hate to tell you that, well, I hate to tell you I told you so, but maybe I do.